was possibly my favourite ever quote in the City Morning Herald the other day. Yes. We have a saying in Wyoming, don't piss on my head and tell me it's raining. <laughs> Please welcome and say a big hi to Mr. John Fenton. And Jeremy and Justin and, and the other people from Australia came to the United States and we stood on the ridge overlooking our home. Uh, I was shocked to hear that uh, Australia, a place that has captured my imagination from the time I was a child, was going to be facing the same destruction that we faced in the United States. In Texas, in a place called the Barnett Shale, Halliburton and some of the other major players who might have seen their trucks driving through Australia, much to my disdain, uh, developed and perfected high volume slip water hydraulic fracturing. There's been a mass destruction. We're now seeing, that's something about this. This, this industry, this type of exploitation is the great equalizer. You're going to find out if this moves into your area what it's like to be the minority. But I can guarantee you, uh, you have this coming to your neighborhood or into your rural areas and your water's poisoned and your air is poisoned and your land's devalued and you see your neighbors suffering it doesn't take you long to figure out who the real terrorists are. And it's not a bunch of fellows that, you know, live in the Middle East and, and hide in caves. It's the politicians and the corporate heads of these companies who are willing to sacrifice you to, for their bottom line. And that is one of the most encouraging things I've seen here in Australia, is the we stood in the pillow with farmers, with what we call hippies, with everybody in between, and with native leaders. And people stood with a unified voice and spoke out against the destruction that's occurring there. So, we can talk about corporate profits, and we can talk about energy independence, and all the, the terms and all the catchphrases they want you to to center on, but what this is about is human rights. So this is our home, as we were still building it, and the derrick in the background is 16 feet outside the minimum distance that they can be from our water well. We've got 24 gas wells on the 1,000 acres. Most of them are, we can see from the house, they're very close. Uh, we actually have one that's 100 feet inside. I've heard said by some of the people here that the, some of the Australian state governments and the national governments, we have the best regulations, they say. We have the most stringent standards. Well, Wyoming says the same thing. <laughs> of the 200 wells drilled here, there was never one inspected by the state. So you can have all the paper rules that you want, but it's, if they're not enforced, they're not worth the paper they're written on. And they're going to tell you that over and over and over. Not only is this safe, and we've been doing it for years, but we've got the best regulations that there is. Well, there's one regulation that you need, and that's to ban this. This is an industry that knows no limitations as to where their greed will take them. The Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, the Safe Water Act, the Superfund Act in the United States, which deals with toxic chemicals and how they're stored and how they're cleaned up and how they're regulated, this industry is exempt from every one of them. When you see these politicians now in Australia that are making these cozy deals and signing drilling leases and acting as lobbyists, that's the tip of the iceberg. So when they say to you that this is safe, when they say to you that we've been doing this and we know what we're doing, they know a couple things what to do. They know how to buy government and they know how to change the rules in their favor. And you can stand up and say, if this is so safe, I want to know every one of these chemicals before you ever set foot in my state or my township. And I'll guarantee you they won't be able to do that because it's not safe. And they don't want to tell their dirty little secrets. Uh, this has not only changed our landscape, contaminated our water, contaminate our air, but we now have property values that are worth nothing. There are people here who have worked for two or three generations to build the farms and ranches that they call home, and they couldn't sell them tomorrow if they wanted to. 
And they'll tell you that things are done differently here than they were done in the United States. But when we walked around the location in the Pilliga a couple days ago, there were pallets and pallets of biocide sitting on location in big blue jugs right on the side, biocide. 